Yo, 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 physics, 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 physics. Hi, I'm Vinayapal and I'm back. This is season 2 episode number 5 of the Pathfinder series and here I'm bringing you a question from build up your understanding of the kinematics chapter from the Pathfinder book. This is part of the homework for uh, the second lecture of the crash course. Make sure you go to vinayapal.com and enroll if you haven't already done so. You'll get the full list of questions for the Pathfinder homework for the crash course along with full video solutions. Everything is for free. Alright, so let's take a look at this question. Three points A, B and C are on straight horizontal line with equal distances between adjacent points. At an instant all the three points are moving, the point A begins to move vertically upwards with a constant velocity u, point C vertically downwards with a constant acceleration A without any initial velocity. How should B move vertically so that the three points always remain collinear? So if I draw the diagram, they are all equidistant. So A is moving vertically upwards with the uh, velocity u. So in time t let's say it will be here. C is moving vertically downwards with acceleration a. So in time t let's say these are the positions of a and c. So b must be here. Okay so we can do this in the ground frame but see when there, when there are so many particles moving, there are three particles moving it will be easier to go in the frame of one particle because then one particle will be stationary. We, don't only, we only then have to worry about the motion of two particles instead of three. So let me just go in the frame of uh, one of the particles. Let's, let's say, uh, let me go in the frame of C. So in the frame of C, C remains stationary. Now C had an acceleration A downwards. So in this frame of C, A will have a velocity U and acceleration A upwards. Accel uh, if I take upward as positive, in the ground frame acceleration of c was minus a, so acceleration of a was 0, so acceleration of a with respect to c would be plus a. That's what I've drawn here. Okay, so in time t, let's say a reaches here at this point. So now it's very easy to see that because a b is equal to b c, this blue length which is the displacement of b with respect to c should be half of this red length which is displacement of A with respect to C. So displacement of B uh, with respect to C. So in the ground frame displacement of B minus displacement of C. So displacement of C is in the downward direction. So minus half AT squared is the displacement of C should be equal to half times displacement of A with respect to C. Now A has an initial velocity of U and an acceleration of A with respect to c, so that will be ut plus half at squared. So solving this equation, I will get sb displacement of b in the ground frame as u by 2t minus half a by 2t squared. So this is the displacement of b as a function of time, which is what I want. And uh, basically what that physically means is that b is moving upwards with an initial velocity of u by 2 and a deceleration of a by 2. And that means it's uh, initial uh, Velocity is u by 2 upwards, but acceleration is a by 2 downwards. So that's your answer.